Showcase San Jose, California. You don't know how many times I've said that, but if you count all the videos, you'll probably get a close approximation. Here on Totally Guitars, and today is something a little bit different for me and possibly for you, but the lap steel. Um, lap steels were actually the beginning of the electric guitar. Uh, came from Hawaiian music, you know. or what you just heard that's not my forte but that's where it kind of started and they were doing it with uh, the slap key guitars and using bars and stuff and uh, somebody came up with the bright idea of sticking a magnetic pickup under the strings and then they wouldn't need to have a big box and they could make it loud with these newfangled amplifiers and that was kind of the start uh, my knowledge says that Rickenbacker came up with the first one called the frying pans and I've got a couple here at the store from the 20s and 30s if you want to see what those look like but right here I've got an ES150 I think that's right from Gibson and it's really cool it's got the little mini Les Paul body and <laughs> flame maple back and sides this is just an incredible instrument and as you can tell it's got great sound And you've heard that sound every Saturday morning. You know, in the cartoons, they used a lot of, of, of pedal steel and lap steel. Um, and you, you play scales just by moving the bar. Eventually, people figured out that they could get a lot more accuracy if they put this on a on a stand and then use pedals to bend the strings and holding the bar straight, doing that kind of stuff. And that's where the pedal steals, and you can get up to 12 pedals and six necks, and it's really wacky, uh, more than I can even start to think of. But the the lap steel is coming come and gone in popularity. A lot of guys play with a clean tone. but you may have recognized that as the infamous Sleepwalk by Pancho and I forget who the other guy's name is. Santo and Johnny. Santo and Johnny, whatever. You know, uh, at my age it's okay to forget stuff. Just as long as I don't forget to eat. Uh, but another tonality that I'm sure you've heard of found these and they're typically sold with little tiny amplifiers about that size and they just crank them all the way up and just rock <laughs> Thank you. 
lot of sound out of these little beasties. Uh, and I happen to use an Open G tuning, uh, a favorite of mine because it's pretty straightforward. Turn the gain down just a little bit. Uh, you've got the DGB is the same as a regular guitar, so. That scale is pretty common. The A is down to a G, so you only have to you know, adapt for that. And of course, the open D at the top makes it pretty easy to just get chords. And you can just manipulate it around, and, and that pretty soon you're playing slide like the master. So uh, it'd be fun to go do that. Oh, wait, our studio audience has a question. Uh, your studio audience has a request. Can yeah. you do Dust My Broom? You know, uh, uh, I think I might be able to, but I believe... That I used an open D or open D to me. Something like that. Um, so that's another tuning. Uh, alternate tunings we've talked about before. I don't know if we've actually gone into doing a segment on alternate tunings, but I, I, I feel one coming on if we haven't. But you can play along with all those different tunings and, and a whole new word of music, mu world of musicality opens up, so to speak. Stuff that you're, you know, if there's something you're hearing on the radio or on a CD of your favorite guitar player, you're going, how's he doing that? Chances are it's an alternate tuning. So, it would behoove you to check that out. Thank you for listening. I'm Jack at Guitar Showcase. Hope to see you around sometime.